Each Vertice Point Shoe is created to empower new and seasoned dancers alike to develop their strength, art, and technique while staying safe and healthy. Our shoes are designed by a PhD engineer for a new generation of ballet dancers. We combine craftsmanship and technique with an acute understanding of modern day science to ensure that our shoes are technically excellent, physiologically safe, and visually stunning. Those who choose Vertice Point Shoes are in search of an edge over the competition, a tool to help them experience more joy each time they put on their shoes while they get stronger and gain more technical skills. When choosing Vertice, they choose a shoe that will support their dream, a dream of metamorphosis into dancing perfection. When choosing a point shoe, don't settle for anything less than one that will support you as you pursue your passions and dreams. Choose Vertice. I've danced on Harlequin floors my, most of my career. I think it's kind of become a privilege to have it. You know, I, I do uh, a lot of guesting outside of the company here at Pennsylvania Ballet, and, and usually the floor is very hard, almost cement-like. There really is something unique about Harlequin that, that matches what we have to do specifically for classical ballet. I was able to dance until I was 38 years old, um, and I don't think I would have being able to dance until that long if it wasn't for the Harlequin Tours. We love our Harlequin floors. Dance on Harlequin. Bailan los suelos de Harlequin.
Evening, everybody. Welcome to the senior final round for the YAGP 2023 season here in Tampa, Florida. I am Catherine Morgan. And I am John Celia, and I am uh, proud and happy to be here. Yes. We are so excited to bring you an incredible senior round tonight. The junior round last night was absolutely amazing, so you are in for just as much talent. Phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah. And, and Catherine, here's what I was thinking today. I was thinking, you know, we hear a lot at these days to manage expectations, right? To keep those expectations kind of low. Well, I think that philosophy is going to go out the window. <laughs> I think if we have even sky-high expectations, I am certain that these dancers are going to fulfill those expectations and then some. Absolutely. We have 35 women and 35 men this evening, so it's quite a lot of dancers. Um, they hail from 21 different countries. And this is just such a special evening because with the seniors, it's not just about winning a prize tonight, you have all the company directors sitting in the audience. They are looking to offer jobs, to offer scholarships, to offer training programs to these dancers. So this is a very, very big deal for them. That's right, it is. Now, Catherine, are you looking forward to any variation in particular or any dancer in particular? Well, I mean, looking at this list, we have a lot of variety tonight, probably more so than we even did last night. Right. We have some um, Odile on here. We have some Gonzati on here. We have a lot of Don Q on here. Just a lot of beautiful, beautiful solos. And I'm actually really looking forward to the men. It, it, yeah. I think the senior men this year are exceptional. They are, absolutely. Uh, I, I had the pleasure of seeing them do their contemporary, and wow, just they just kill it, knock it out of the park. Any cliche you want, they're doing it. So one thing I do want to mention tonight that we were told by Larissa herself, okay. Baliev, who runs and, this beautiful organization. Yeah. Hi, Larissa, and hi, hi Gennady. We love you. All right. Please they're, vote for your audience favorite. You can vote for a dancer to win the audience favorite award. You just need to know their number. You can type it in Instagram. You can type it in the chat. All right. You're allowed to vote for a contestant for the All audience favorite award. All right. Fantastic. Will we be allowed to? I Sure. I think so. I, think I don't we think we're exempt, are we? I don't think no, so. No, no. So, Catherine, how was your day here today? It was good. I actually had the privilege of judging the ensemble category today. As did I. We were together, and there were some amazing Ensembles yeah, we today. did. We saw some fantastic ensembles, yes. and we're sorry that we're not able to bring those to you live. Yes. yes, it's a very special category because I think it allows dancers to get a taste of YAGP finals without the pressure of doing a solo. It gives them the opportunity to come do classes, compete, but doing it with their friends. I think right, it's really right. Important. And I think it's so important, you know, as a school, you know, you, you actually, I don't know about you, but I really sense that community and that teamwork when I see them working in the ensemble. And I love watching a dancer who I really admire doing a solo integrate into the ensemble and see how well they work as a team member. Yes, and we saw some ensembles that had upwards of, what, 40, 50 people today? That's right. I know Huge. they filled that <laughs> stage. Yes. They did. So once again, if you are just joining us, we are here for the senior final round at the Tampa Finals for YAGP, and we are so excited to be bringing That's this to you. That's right. We are here in Tampa, and as I said last night, there's no other welcome but a warm welcome yeah. here in Tampa. As you see, if you <laughs> yes. see me sweating, you know, we did the ensemble judging. I had to go home, had to recharge, yes. and kind of run back in this 100% humidity, or that's what it feels like. Absolutely. And just to give credit to the crew, ensembles ended, what, half an hour ago? Right. Not yeah. even? I know. So they have done a very quick turnaround of the theater, of backstage. The soloists were ready. They are currently doing their onstage, uh, what is it called, open stage. Their open stage. Their open stage. Right, and let's talk about that. I feel that that is such an incredible skill they have to get comfortable to acclimate for to do a variation here in the highest pressure situation and they just have what about 30 seconds to feel the stage whereas yes. professionals you know before that curtain goes up we're on stage pretty much all day you know getting comfortable with yes. our surroundings and these dancers are so adaptable that they just kind of they step on stage they're ready they're clicked in their coaches have them you know their system down and they are ready to deliver 
And I think you can see some of that open stage on Instagram if you are interested. Oh. But okay. it's also this situation of everybody's warming up together. Right. So you don't get the stage to yourself. You're, you're kind of jostling right, right. for a position. So I, that, that's a mental trip. By it is. Say. It is a mental trip. And it actually, I think it, it gets me more nervous watching them do that than they are. Yes, absolutely. So the performance is about to begin. We really hope you enjoy the show. Once again, please vote for your audience favorite dancer. I would maybe wait till everybody's gone, make notes. Right. And, as yeah. yeah and get as we will be doing. Yes, we will definitely be doing. But, all right. Uh, and uh, let's wish all the dancers a big merit. A big merit. Yes. All right. And then hope everybody out there is going to settle in. Maybe they have a you know a little green juice by them, and they'll be able to. I love that. Yeah, a little green juice, a little uh, a little salad or something. And we will see you at intermission. We'll be here to, to talk to you again. We will. Look forward to it. So enjoy, everybody. All right. Yes. Free season of Youth America Grand Prix.
15,000 dancers auditioned at 30 cities throughout the United States and at 15 international locations. 250 soloists in the senior age division, ages 15 to 19, were selected to proceed to the finals here in Tampa. Tonight you will see 35 of the top men and women in the senior age division. One last time, they will be performing before they disperse on scholarship to study on scholarship at one of the world's leading dance academies. What you're about to see tonight is truly the future of dance. We welcome all of you in the auditorium. We also welcome all of you watching throughout the entire globe via our live streaming. Welcome. And also, I would like to introduce our esteemed panel of judges. Rector, Paluca University of Dance, Dresden, in Germany, Jason Beachy. Head of Artistic Programs, the Royal Ballet School, United Kingdom, Jose Carriol. <laughs> Artistic Director, Kansas City Ballet, USA, Devon Carney. <laughs> Artistic Director, English National Ballet School, United Kingdom, Viviana Durante. Artistic Director of Princess Grace Academy in Monaco, Luca Masala. Director of the John Kranko School of the Stuttgart Ballet in Germany, Tadeusz Matic. Artistic Director of Dutch National Ballet Academy in Netherlands, Ernst Meisner. <laughs> Trainee Program Associate Director, San Francisco Ballet School, United States, Pascal Molat. <laughs> CEO and Associate Artistic Director of National Ballet, United States, Nick Mulliken. <laughs> Artistic Director of American Ballet Theater Studio Company, United States, Sasha Radetzky. <laughs> First Ballet Master, Ballet Dortmund, Germany, Alison Rocha. <laughs> President and Director of the Rock School for Dance Education, United States, Peter Stark. <laughs> Artistic Director of Houston Ballet, United States, Stanton Welch. We would like to remind you that tonight's performance is an ongoing scholarship audition. These dancers will proceed to study on scholarship at the world's leading dance academies. So ladies and gentlemen, I give you the future of dance. We will now begin with the senior women final round. Number 604, Isabella Howard, age 15, from the Dimitri Kula Classical Ballet Academy, California, USA, performing Don Quixote.
Number 612, Mackenzie Chu Robin, age 15, from Amerian Ballet Academy, California, USA, performing La Baya de Number 621, Madison Bebilacqua, age 15, from the Timothy Draper Center for Dance Education, York, USA, performing Awakening of Flora. Number 627, Lisa Quevedo, age 15, from Ballet Etude Seasons, Brazil, performing Diana and Actaeon.
Number 628, Sophia Ku, age 15, from Southland Ballet Academy, California, USA, performing Don Quixote. Number 637, Sayuri Shimonaga, age 15, from Katra Ballet Studio, Japan, performing Napoli. Number 638, Sana Matsukawa, age 15, from Symphony Ballet Studio, Japan, performing Awakening of Flora.
Number 644, Emmeline Ownby, age 15, from International Ballet Academy, North Carolina, USA, performing Talisman. Number 648, Ana Ibarz Leon, age 15, from Rakpich Ballet Academy, Spain, performing Coppelia. Number 650, Anya Damji, age 15, from Elite Classical Coaching, Texas, USA, performing Swan Lake.
Number 652, Elizabeth Fang, age 15, from the Morning Star Dance Academy, Georgia, USA, performing Satanella. The next number would be number 653, Taylor Amira, age 15, from the Master Ballet Academy, Arizona, USA. Unfortunately, she will not be performing this evening due to an injury. <laughs> Attention judges, the next number will be number 659. Number 659, Chloe Hennessy, age 15, from Master Ballet Academy, Arizona, USA, performing Raimonda.
Number 660, Olympia Georgia Caraulalu, age 15, from Joy to Dance, Romania, performing La Esmeralda. <laughs> Number 661, Tak Kyung Lee, age 15, from the Rock School for Dance Education, Pennsylvania, USA, performing Awakening of Flora. Number 664, Isabella Meyer, age 15, from Elite Classical Coaching, Texas, USA, performing Le Corsair. Thank you. 
Number 677, Lucia Abril Marcucci, age 16, from Vale do Teatro, Escola Basilio Frenza, Brazil, performing La Esmeralda. Number 708, Kaylin Kratz, age 16, from City Valley, San Francisco, California, USA, performing Giselle. Number 712, Gwyneth Smith, age 16, from Nashville Valley, Tennessee, USA, performing Sleeping Beauty.
Number 716, Ava Lynn, age 16, from Bobby School of Performing Arts, California, USA, performing La Bayadere. Number 717, Ashley Burks, age 16, from Ballettschule Theater Basel, Switzerland, performing La Esmeralda.
Number 718, Summer Montenegro, age 16, from Master Valley Academy, Arizona, USA, performing Swan Lake. Number 721, Amira Hogan, age 16, from Vitaka School for Dance, Texas, USA, performing La Bayadere. Number 724, Natalia Cardona, age 16, from Youth American Ballet Company, Arizona, USA, performing Don Quixote. Thank you. 
Number 726, Haruyoko, age 16, from Ballettschule Theater Basel, Switzerland, from La Bayadere. Number 735, Isabella Roman, age 17, from International Ballet Theater Academy, Pennsylvania, USA, performing Paquita. Number 739, Tiffany Efimov, age 17, from Academy of Ballet and Jazz, Canada, performing La Esmeralda.
Number 751, Julie Joyner, age 17, from International City School of Ballet, Georgia, USA, performing Sleeping Beauty. Number 756, Yeun Lee, age 17, from Korea National University of Arts, South Korea, performing La Bayadere.
Number 762, Kaylee Johnson, age 17, School of Philadelphia Ballet, Pennsylvania, USA, performing La Bayadere. Number 765, Ana Luisa Arenches Negrao, age 18, from Ballet du Teatro Escola Basilio Frenza, Brazil, performing Grampa Classique.
Number 773, Sofia Vilar da Costa, age 18, from Correa, Barcelona, Spain, performing Grand Capaz Classique. Number 779, Soo Min Kim, age 18, from the Korea National University of Arts, South Korea, performing Grandpa Classique.
Number 783, Jade Connor, age 18, from the Rock School for Dance Education, Pennsylvania, USA, performing Grand Pas Classique. Number 784, Reagan Pender, age 19, from Next Generation Ballet at the Strass Center, Florida, USA, performing La Female Garde. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We will be back with the senior men final round after a brief 15 minute intermission. Okay, so. Well. That was the women. That was. We had not three, we had four Grand Plaque 
Grandpa Classiques, yes. and then Reagan Pender coming in with La Fima Garde. La Fima Terrific. Garde. I want to point out, actually, because I'm sure a lot of people are at home wondering, why did we have four Grand Placas? Pla, I can't even talk about it. Grand in a row. Classiques. Thank you. In a row, it's not a programming thing. You are watching these dancers by age. So we started with the youngest and ended with the Started older. 15? Yes. Finish 15 around 19? to finish to 19. That's it. Yeah, that's how they came up with the order of tonight's program is my age. So Catherine, I'm dying to know, was there any standout in your mind that I you'd like to I have to say mention? these beautiful South Korean dancers yeah. just come in here and just the, everything, the feet, the details, the presentation. I mean, we saw one Grandpa Classique, we saw um, a Gamzari, we saw a Awakening of Flora, just it's like the little details, every finger is in the right Absolutely. place. Absolutely. But Absolutely. I also want to mention um, a dancer from Brazil, the first Grand Park Classique we saw as right. well. Right. Yes. Um, stunning. Yeah. Still, still imprinted in my mind. I also, uh, I'd be remiss if we didn't mention Nashville's own Gwyneth yes. Smith. Yes. Right. Representing Nashville. Yes, representing and, Nashville. And uh, and there was a, there was a dancer that I had recently seen in the regional and Toronto by the name of Madison Bellalacqua. Yes, she was she, gorgeous. You know, it's just fantastic yes. to see them level up. Yes. Right? She was she danced amazingly well. She had such attention to detail and to see her progress even in two weeks I feel. Yes. So props to Madison. Props to all the fantastic all dancers. I and mean, I want to point out this is also live theater and little things happen. We saw a couple of falls. We saw a couple of little stumbles. But these women are so well trained. They just kept going. They finished their solo. They got up. They kept, you know, it's, that's the mark of a professional because it's live theater. Things happen. Right. And let's, and let's also not forget that I do not think that really... Ha, uh, taint their performance in the judges' eyes. No. You know, I, I, it's not the Olympics. It's not no. just a strictly numerical victory here. No. You know, where they're looking at they're looking at quality. They're looking at musicality. They're looking at things that are you know hard to really measure by numbers. And I think those qualities do not go. You know, they don't get undermined if somebody has a little stumble. If somebody drops a fan. No, she handled it so beautifully. Yeah. She's like, I'm going to whip out a double and handle it. But you know what? Right. It also shows the judges that they can be a professional. If that happens in a right. performance in a company, they can keep going. Right. And I think that's actually really important. The mistake doesn't count against you. How you handle it does. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the poise that these dancers have just from the moment they set foot on stage Till the end, till when they leave into the wings. I mean, they are just poised and they're all their perfection. Yes. And it's just so wonderful to see. I'd also like to uh, point out that the wonderful tradition of Bourneville yes. has made the made its way over to Japan, and the dancer was um, uh, Sayu Simaga. And she did a wonderful version of Napoli, and it's always so nice. You know, I love the Danish tradition, and it's yes. a lovely to see a great Bournemouth. And Bournemouth is extremely detailed and extremely difficult. It might look simple, but it's one of the hardest styles there is, I think, personally, right. to get it right. And she was beautiful. Right. Um, so let's talk about what we're about to see. Okay. We're so, about to see the gentlemen take the stage. The and they are incredible. Just looking at these names, some of them you might know um, from previous years or just through the social media scene, but there's a lot of tricks coming up. There are. And there's a lot of tricks, but they're, you know, you're, you're undoubtedly going to see these tricks with a polish yes. and with an artistry. Yes, the feet, the placement. I think for me as a judge, when I'm judging, that's one of the things I hone in on the most are the transitions. Mm -hmm. How we get in a step, how we get out of a step. Right. It's not just whack a leg. It's how do we get into the whack a leg? How do we get out of the whack a leg? Right. You know? and, and a lot of that discussion amongst, I hear amongst the teachers where, you know, they're, they're not impressed by, you know, the number of pirouettes. They're not impressed by the amplitude of the jumps. They're impressed by those little details, the things that are are not instantly gratifying when you're dancing you know that the hard work the nitty-gritty the nitty-gritty yeah. and again it shows you can be in a company and that's what these directors are looking for tonight that's right and uh, I also would like to point out that yes the number of pirouettes elicits great response from the audience but I saw one dancer 
elicit an ovation just from a chasse step jeté, just by the sheer perfection and, and uh, sculptural quality she had in the air. Yes, it's so lovely to see the other participants in this auditorium cheering for these dancers. What you're not seeing are the amount of the other dancers from finals in the room. That's right, cheering that these, is. these dancers on. And I'm actually upstairs during the competition watching uh -huh. all these kids run back and forth and cheer and see their friends. It's, right. it's absolutely adorable. It is such a healthy, it's competitive so environment. You know, I, I mean, I feel bad saying competitive. It is competitive, mm -hmm. but it's such a healthy kind of competition it here. Is. You know, I think, you know, you see, you see the dancers, we had this discussion uh, last night about watching your fellow performers and I'm seeing the fellow performers watching each other and even encouraging them. Yes. Just unbelievable. Yes, and like in the wings, I believe there was one dancer who the, the previous competitor came off and she was right. like, yay, and then right. it was her turn. I just think that's so lovely because she's about to dance, yet she took the time right. to, to right. encourage. So right. do you have a favorite male variation? You know, again, I'm partial to the Born in Ville. Uh, yeah. I, I would say my favorite male variation, I'll go on record and I'll say La Sulfide, mm. uh, the, uh, the, the variation of James. Yes, are we seeing it? And, any uh, you know, that was one of the things I watched on repeat. You know, I had the yeah. VCR and I had the tape of Nureyev, and, yeah. you know, I couldn't get enough of that. And that's, again, all technique. All technique. All technique. Right. And while we're talking about variations, I want to reiterate, as we spoke about at the top of the show, you can vote for your favorite dancer. Right. We ask that you leave it in the YouTube video comments, both on last night's junior round and on tonight. Not in the live chat because the live chat disappears. So if you've already voted in the live chat, make sure you actually comment in the YouTube video comments or All come right. back after the broadcast is over. All right. So in essence, there are not only these judges that we see here tonight, all the judges are out there too. Yes. All right, so be fair. Yes, be fair. All you need is your favorite dancer's number. You can just go back and rewind and, and see it. That's, last night as well, Junior. That's team. right. I wanted to remind you, even if you go back into last night's competition, you can watch that on Rewind and you can vote in the comments section as well. Yes, absolutely. So, John, when you're judging, do you have things you look for? What are some of the things you look for? Oh, I'm on the spot here. The things I look for are a, um, a soft, deep demi-plie mm -hmm. coming out of jumps. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't like a long preparation for pirouettes. I don't like uh, things that are telegraphed. I like to be have a little bit of a, a surprise element in yes. the dancing. Yes. Yeah, how about you, Catherine? I agree to that because you never want to say, I'm going to turn. Right, right? and wanna... then we're just waiting there. Yeah, we're yeah. waiting for something to happen. Um, I don't know. Again, we were talking about the transitions. I'm really partial to Porter Bra. I right. think sometimes as a dancer, you look for your strength. Mm -hmm. And I was always an upper half kind of dancer. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's it's just the, the poetry of the Porter Bra. Right. I think that's really important. Right. It's the whole package. It is. And I, I, I feel that I'm constantly uh, reminding dancers that I work with that the majority of the audience is responding to your port de bras and your epaumont. Yes. You know, us aficionados, and we, you know, we really, we get down, we're the, the you know, the bunheads, the ballet nerds, you know, yes. we get a little obsessed with the feet. Yes. But, you know, Uncle Carl and Aunt Judy, <laughs> they're really focused more on the port de bras. Yeah, it's so true, because as a non-trained eye, that is what you notice. Is, is, is there a quality to it, or is there... Oh, right. right, and I have to remind everybody again, though, we saw a dancer display impeccable port de bras in Epaumont, and it elicited response from the audience. Yes. So it's not only those quintuple pirouettes. Yes. Now, it's, you know, it's the carriage, it's the detail, it's the upper body. I want to just kind of inform the audience, what you're seeing tonight happened very last minute. These dancers found out that they were in the final round at about 3 o'clock today and the final round is 7.30 p.m. Wow. So these wow. dancers had a very last minute, oh my goodness, I'm performing tonight, wow. let me get my costume. It's a lot of this is last minute. Yeah. And cool. what that does to you mentally, not only just makes you a little bit frazzled, but then this situation. So I wanted to let you guys know that, that they found out 
four or five hours ago. Right. And how nerve-wracking is that for the parents, for the coaches, for the teachers too, you know? I mean, yeah. I think you just have to assume that you're going on and do everything in that direction and then you get the good news and you're ready. Yes, and the seniors also had their scholarship classes this morning, which we should talk a little bit about that. They have a class where all of these judges come and watch them for the full hour mm -hmm. and are also offering scholarships based on class, which, because it's very hard to offer a scholarship on a minute and a half. Great, great point. And the word around the campfire, too, is most of those school directors, company directors, they are really focused in on how these dancers are working in class, what they're, uh, you know, what how they present themselves when they have not rehearsed something. Yes. So it is. It is a really. It's a great. Uh, what a measuring stick. Yes. And can you think on the spot? Can you learn the combination right. quickly? You know, obviously we pick variations that showcase our strengths. So if you're not a turner, we still need to see them turn. So that's what a class is good for. And they did that this morning, and now they're doing this. Right, and they're also looking for something that us adults are kind of obsessed with now, spatial awareness. Yes. You know, how you, how you can assimilate into the formations in class. You know, it's very telling. You know, there are a lot of these, a lot of these companies, very crowded in class. You get in the wrong person's way, that could be the end. That's it. Right? Don't stand in her bar spot. So it's not only about that fifth position and that high extension, it's about how you manage your space, how you present yourself in kind of a chaotic situation too. Absolutely, and one of the things I love about YAGP is that many of the dancers who you're not seeing tonight can still be offered a scholarship. Right. They were called back to a scholarship class. There are many finalists who are not on this stage who are able to still participate in everything. So it's not just these 70 dancers you're seeing tonight. Every dancer here is eligible for a scholarship. That's true. And that, I think that's really important. That is great. And it's great to just remind everybody that I think first and foremost, Youth America Grand Prix is an educational enterprise, Absolutely. not just a competitive uh, corral. No, it is very much about the education, about the further study, because at the end of the day, having a dance career is not just about doing a solo. You have to be a good employee. You have to be able to be swan number 17 on the yeah. left. You, yep. know, you have to be able to encompass all of this. And I think that's one of the things that YAGP is all about, is the, yeah. whole, the whole experience. And I know for me personally, when I'm judging, in, in the, not in the back of my mind, right in the front of my mind, is to be educational and not to be judgmental, yes. really. You know, I mean, it's kind of a contradiction, but, you know, when, when I'm watching a dancer, I'm thinking, how can I help them? How can I help build them up? Not how can I help criticize them? Because speaking from experience, I was always, the worst classes I had and the worst I felt about myself were the classes where the teachers were hard, were rude, were mean, passive aggressive. So it's important to build these kids up from a friendly standpoint, from an encouraging standpoint, so that then they, can, they feel they can improve. Because like we talked about last night, half the battle is mental. Absolutely, Catherine. And that reminds me of something that you posted on your, I don't know if it was the YouTube or the Instagram, but, you know, uh, a lot of teachers would, would correct me, why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. Why are you doing that? And you, you had a, a great point about turning that why to a try. Yes. And I think, you know, two letters make a world of difference. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the, current, the current climate today, it's a much more positive, uh, positive reinforcement rather than the old school negativity of yesteryear that we endured. Yes, because it's not, it's not mutually exclusive. Right. You know what I mean? You don't have to yell and scream in order to improve. You can be right. kind. You can encourage. I see it all the time with kids. If they relax, if they think, oh, yeah, I can try this, that's when they're going to improve. They're not right. going to improve, you know, being scared about and that's the And that's the name of the game. How, what can we give them so their journey is improved and they're fulfilled more than they were before that class? One class I do want to talk about is a uh -huh. class that I taught yesterday to the pre-competitive soloists, who you are not seeing. I want to mention them briefly because they are so special, the nine to 11 year olds. That class, they just stood there and ate everything up and tried things and went for it. And that's a very special group, those nine to 11 year olds. Right, and I hope those nine to 11 year olds are listening. Look how happy you made Catherine, it right? It was very special. They're all so talented. It's such a young age, which we touched on last night. Yeah. 
I don't think I could have done this at their age. And what terrific schools that, that they're just nurturing these dancers and providing them with the training that we're seeing what we're seeing today yes. or tonight. It's yeah. just how, they, how they've how they prepared these dancers never ceases to amaze me. Because you know, it's such a, it's such a psychological game and, and each student has a different mindset that makes them productive and all these gifted, talented coaches and teachers know exactly the right buttons to push. And maybe someday we're gonna see these pre-competitives on this stage. Oh, we will. Oh, on the, on I the would, senior stage. I would absolutely bet your bottom dollar on that. Yes. So I want to thank some people while we're still here. We have about five more minutes for the competition. Oh, we start. do. So okay. go get a snack if you're still around. All right. Um, but I want to thank LK Studios, who yep. are right here to our right. Yay! There's like it's like basically like you said last night. It's NASA to the right it's, of us. It's NASA to the right of us. They've been here from eight in the morning, and they go well after we uh, pack out of the theater. So. Yes. Yes. And then let's also let's let's also recognize David uh, backstage and how smoothly this is running. It's right. There was only what one little sound glitch there. One sound glitch, you which know? is and, very, and take very this weird, and yeah. take this into consideration. Every single dancer, every single variation has their own specific music cue. Yes. So they have to keep those music cues straight. And then we saw one dancer come on. The music started early. She held her position. They brought the music back to the beginning, and then they, you know, they synced up. Yeah, and that has to throw you mentally too. And again, she did great. She just she stood did there fantastically and well. did her thing. Right, and almost in a sense, it gets the audience behind you if you incur kind of one of these little mishaps or yes. something. Yes, 100%. Right? It gets yeah. the nerves out right. in a way. Even a fall, you yes. know, it, it really ingratiates these artists to the audience. You know, uh, I, I noticed when the dancer had dropped the fan, right? And you see there was just a split second when she had to bend over and pick that fan up. And you see kind of the break of form and you realize how much form she sustains for the whole, you know, a four minute solo. Yes. It's absolutely astounding. And you know, I've been around this art form pretty much my whole life and it's still super impressive. It's incredible. I mean, honestly, I want to reiterate that these kids are 15 to 19. They are not professionals. They look professional, but they are not professional. They are just your typical high schoolers who just do a lot of training in ballet. Yeah. They're normal kids. I see them backstage. Right, right. They are normal kids and they are able to do this and handle situations and handle a music m mishap, handle a fan mishap. Right. It's it's really impressive. Yeah, they're like superheroes. You know, you see these you see these people kind of in pedestrian clothes, you're like, oh yeah, yeah. And then you see them on stage. You can't believe it's the same person. No, you can't. And let's give shout outs also to these tutu designers now. Yes. I mean come <laughs> <Ballet> on. <fashion. laughs> like they are bringing it. They're, they're, I mean I hope you guys see the detail that have gone into some of these costumes yes. you know just exquisite yes we should do our own fashion program yeah Ballet we fashion. Should, a little runway huh? yes exactly and, it, and that's that's the fun part of this too is when it's like Halloween basically you get to dress up do ballet I mean this, these kids are having the time of their life and it's it's because of YAGP it yeah. really is it's yeah. incredible it's I also want to thank the incredible YAGP staff who yes. are also here always the best to us Right? 7 a.m. They were right? at 7 a.m. We're never today. in need of anything. We no. got oranges, we got coffee, we got yes. smart waters. You yes. know, they just, take care of us upstairs. They do. So, and I know that's important, I think, to the businesses that we patronize now. You know, I know it makes a difference to me if I know a certain business is treating their employees really great. I am, I'm much more likely to uh, patronize those biz businesses. Yes. And so we are about to begin our senior final round for the All men. right, the gentlemen. And once again, there are 35 gentlemen. We are starting with the youngest and progressing to the oldest. So you will see the 15-year-old men first and we will end with the 19-year-old men. These guys are incredible. They are. I am Take so it from excited. us. Yes. And then also do not forget to vote in the comments section. Yes, in the comments section, not the live chat, the actual YouTube comments for your favorite dancer by number. All right, thanks. Yeah. Thanks for joining us and enjoy the men's round and mayor to all the competitors. And we'll see you at the end for a little bit of a, another wrap up. A little recap. So enjoy.
Welcome back everyone to the senior final round of the Youth America Grand Prix 2023 season finals in Tampa, Florida. We will continue with the senior men. Number 807, Leonidas Adarmes, age 15, from Master Valley Academy, Arizona, USA, performing Talisman. Number 808, Kenta Shimanaga, age 15, from Lucia Valley School, Japan, performing Grandpa Classic. Number 809, William Gives, age 15, from UNCSA, North Carolina, USA, performing Coppelia. Number 810, Corbin Holloway, age 15, from City Dance Conservatory, Maryland, USA, performing Flames of Paris.
Number 812, Dylan Weinstein, age 15, from Westside School of Ballet, California, USA, performing Grand Pas Classique. Number 814, Fabrizio Joa Cornejo, age 16, from Balletschule Teatro Basel, Switzerland, performing Flames of Paris. Number 816, Milo Mills, age 16, from the Rock School for Dance Education, Pennsylvania, USA, performing La Fille Malgarde. Number 822, Killian Rudd, age 16, from International Ballet Academy, North Carolina, USA, performing Coppelia.
Number 825, Afonso Nunes, age 16, from Dance and Art School, Portugal, performing Raimonda. Number 826, David Consuegra, age 16, from Next Generation Ballet at the Strauss Center, Florida, USA, performing Flames of Paris. Number 827, Julian Pecoraro, age 16, from UNCSA, North Carolina, USA, performing Paquita. Number 828, Christian Ponder, age 16, from Bataka School for Dance, Texas, USA, performing La Bayadere.
Number 829, Julian DeGier, age 16, from Oklahoma City Ballet School, Oklahoma, USA, performing Le Corsaire. Number 830, Jacob During, age 16, from UNCSA, North Carolina, USA, performing Paquita. <laughs> Number 832, Lucas Matskin, age 16, from AB2 William J. Gillespie, California, USA, performing Coppelia. <laughs> Number 834, Ryoma Husadev, age 16, from the Belarusian State College, Viznaviets Ballet School, Amandar Studio, Belarus, Japan, performing Paquita.
Number 835, Jacob Shapiro, age 16, from Academy of International Ballet, Pennsylvania, USA, performing Harlequinade. <laughs> Number 836, Andrew Shields, age 17, from Ballet Center of Fort Worth, Texas, USA, performing Paquita. Number 837, Jet Lecamus, age 17, from UNCSA, North Carolina, USA, performing Diana and Dacteon. Number 839, Pavel Kulev, age 17, from Dmitry Kulev Classical Ballet Academy, California, USA, performing Paquita. <laughs> Thank you. 
Number 840, Rowan Lindemood, 817, from Nelia Ballet, New York, USA, performing Swan Lake. <laughs> Number 841, Jason Schumann, age 17, from the Sarasota Ballet's Margaret Barbieri Conservatory, Florida, USA, performing Talisman. Number 844, Marvin Ahuech Policarpio, age 17, from Proveo, Mexico, performing Talisman. Number 845, Parker Rosano Keith, 817, from Westlake School for the Performing Arts, California, USA, performing Flames of Paris.
Number 846, Julio Santos, age 17, from Escola do Teatro Bolshoi do Brasil, Brazil, performing Don Quixote. Number 849, Ethan Moss, age 17, from Carrier Ballet Conservatory, North Carolina, USA, performing Giselle. Number 852, Frederick Stuckwish, age 18, from Southold Dance Theater, Indiana, USA, performing Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> Number 857, Song Min Lee, age 18, from Korea National University of Arts, South Korea, performing Don Quixote. Thank you. 
Number 861, Robin Park, age 18, from Dutch National Ballet Junior Company, the Netherlands and South Korea, are performing Le Corsair. Number 866, Min Chul Chang, age 18, from Korea National University of Arts, South Korea, performing Grandpa Classic. Number 867, Cruz Vining, age 18, from the Master Ballet Academy, Arizona, USA, performing Le Corset.
Number 871, Danier Laganzo, age 18, from the Steps Dance Studio, Philippines, performing Diana and Dacteon. <laughs> Number 872, Musa Sultanov, age 19, from Joffrey Academy of Dance, Illinois, USA, and Kazakhstan, performing Don Quixote. Number 873, Daniel Alejandro Guzman, age 19, from Fort Lauderdale Youth Ballet, Florida, USA, and Venezuela, performing Flames of Paris. Number 875, An Fen, age 19, from the School of Philadelphia Ballet, Pennsylvania, USA, performing Swan Lake.
This concludes the senior final round of the Youth America Grand Prix 2023 season finals in Tampa, Florida. See you tomorrow and good night. Wow. Oh my God. That's bravo, it. Bravo, 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 gentlemen. Yes, that was that was thrilling. Some of the, just like watching them do some of those tricks. I don't even, I can't even comprehend how. You can because right. you're no, a guy. No, no, I can't I, comprehend. I, I, I'm not even so watching real. the tricks. I'm watching the polish, the finishes, yes. just sculptural. Yes. After being, you know, after a double tour, double soda bath, and then being able to just hold that pose. Yes. So much respect for these guys. So what were some of the highlights for you? Well, I'll tell you, some of the highlights were seeing dancers that I that I saw a couple of years ago mm -hmm. as juniors, mm -hmm. like Corbin Holloway yes. and Christian Ponder. Yes. Like these two guys, I've seen them as junior competitors, and then to see them growing and improving and just leveling up, yes. it, it really, it's amazing. Yes, Corbin was one of the many Flames of Paris variations tonight, right. and I actually love that variation. Right. And I think it's just a showmanship piece, a lot of good Flames solos tonight. There were. There yeah. are Flames you don't want to put out. No, you don't. That's right. And once again, for me, the South Korean men yep. just Absolutely. Standouts. impeccable. Impeccable. And then there was one more Flames right at the end from Venezuela. Right. Um, Danielle Alejandro Guzman. Mm -hmm. Just Fantastic. Unbelievable, that coupe down and up, yep. just unbelievable. Now we're nerding out. We're nerding out, we're so we'll so, spare we're you we're on so that We're so stoked, <laughs> we're nerding out. Um, I also want to mention uh, Jet Lacamo with the Triple yes. Tours, Diana yes. and Actian. I know yes. we saw last year, you know, a couple, a couple dancers put in Triple Tours. He was the only one tonight. Yes. And I think we got three of those. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed this evening. As a reminder, please vote for your favorite dancer by number in the video comments, both on the junior round and on this round, not on the live comments, on the video comments. We want to hear you. We want yes. to hear your opinion. We want to hear what you have to say, yes. what your, who your favorite was. And I'm assuming that will be awarded at the award ceremony. Yeah, I think we'll it's a new thing it. this year. Yes. So that's very exciting. So thank you all so much for watching. Thank you, John. Thank you, Catherine. This has been a delight. Once again, third year in a row. All right. And uh, hopefully we'll see you next year. All right. Thanks for tuning in. And again, don't forget to vote. And don't forget, uh, we will see you at class when? Monday? We'll see them at the bar on Monday. Sure, but I also believe the award ceremony will, will be streamed. That's right. Here on YouTube on Sunday. All right, so tune in Sunday. Yes. And uh, do you know if the gala tomorrow will be streamed I as well? I don't believe so. All right. I don't believe so because of copyrights, because it's a very exclusive event for those the dancers here. Right, that's so. right. So maybe get on, get on down here to Tampa. I'm sure there's some more yeah. tickets to be had, and we'd love to see you. Absolutely. And thank you to everybody, to the Strav Center. It's to just a fantastic, Yay. <laughs> everybody, it's just a love fest. Thank you, and thank you, and merci beaucoup. Good night, everybody. Good night.